And we're joined now from Leeds by the Labour MP Richard Bergen. He's a shadow Treasury Minister. Mr Bergen, welcome to the programme. Good morning, uh, Andrew. The Communist Party of Britain, which has prominent members in Stop the War, says that attacks on Stop the War are, quote, a systematic and vicious propaganda offensive designed to obscure British imperialism's agenda in conducting the bombing campaign in Syria. Do you agree with that? Well, first of all, I think I'm in a good position to answer some of these questions because uh, I've only ever been a, a member of the Labour Party. I joined uh, when, I'm, uh, when I was 15. And what I really want to focus on is not the uh, members of small political parties who may be involved in Stop the War uh, Coalition, but the tens of thousands, in fact, they've got an email list of 150,000 people who are involved, many of whom are not in any political party, many right, of whom are in the, the Labour Party. Chair, the chairman that has taken over from Mr Corbyn is a member of the Communist Party of Britain, so what's the answer to my question? Um, I think that uh, the attacks on Stop the War are proxy attacks on Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, we haven't had this previously. When Charles Kennedy was speaking at the 2003 demonstration against the Iraq War, which two million people uh, attended, the Liberal Democrats and Charles Kennedy weren't attacked for that, and quite but rightly so. he wasn't so. a member of Stop the War. Pardon? He wasn't a member of the Stop the War coalition. Uh, he spoke on the Stop the War No, but he wasn't platform. a member. Uh, well, I'm not a member of the Stop the War Coalition, but I think there's a really important democratic point here in that it is right that people in a democratic society express their opinion to their MPs, march, campaign and demonstrate against military interventions that they think are incorrect. And I do think that the line and the leadership of the Stop the War Coalition hasn't really changed in the 14 years since it was founded. What has changed is that Jeremy Corbyn has become leader of the Labour Party. And so people uh, in the media and elsewhere who wish to attack Jeremy Corbyn are using Stop the War uh, to uh, do so. Of course, it's not just the media, is it? It's not even the media. Uh, Labour MPs, Tristan Hunt, Stella Crazy, Michael Duggar, many more, Jess Phillips, uh, they've all attacked Stop the War and Mr Corbyn's association with it. I think... Um, the truth is that the majority of Labour MPs, the majority of members of the Shadow Cabinet and the majority of Labour members agreed with Jeremy Corbyn on his, on his analysis on whether or not we should agree to David Cameron's proposal to but, bomb Syria. But and what do you say to their criticism of Mr Corbyn's continued association with Stop the War? Uh, I think they're mistaken. Uh, I think that Stop the War, we've got to look at how Stop the War has involved people from right across the political spectrum. When I was on that march in 2003, that historical march, there wasn't just the Lib Dem leader speaking, there were also people I spoke to who were Conservative voters. So it's not just the 57 varieties of Trotskyite well, groups that, uh, that are involved. If it were the case that it were merely uh, people on the ultra-left, then you I'm, wouldn't have thousands of people involved. You wouldn't right, have 150,000 people But on among the, the leadership list. and Stop the War, who is not either a Communist, a Trotskyite or a Stalinist? Well, there are plenty of trade unions uh, involved in the leadership. Now, but they're among the, the leadership, the people who lead this, whose names are associated with it, who doesn't fill in, fall into that small hard left category? Well, it, it is a coalition, and that's the point of it. It's not so about give me another name that party. doesn't fall into that. Well, I wouldn't even know the full list of uh, people on the board of Stop the War. But what I do know is that there are people from trade unions supporting it, there are trade unions supporting it, probably. In terms of the membership of uh, the Stop the War Coalition, uh, the, the biggest uh, composite of that are Labour Party members. But I do think this is a distraction from the, the democratic issue. We can't say that in this country, being a member of a Stop the War uh, Coalition campaign, campaigning against military interventions that were proven to be uh, disastrous uh, in Iraq and Libya uh, is wrong. It's part of an open yeah. democratic process. I definitely understand and that. And shouldn't I'm, be demonised for being part I, of it. I'm not and arguing, Corbyn I'm not not arguing with you about that. What I'm trying to find out is what Stop the War really stands for and whether it's right that Mr Corbyn and other Labour people should be associated with it. For example, Stop the War published an article last year. This was the title. Sociopaths United, the West versus ISIS, is a marriage made in hell. Beneath the veneer of humanitarianism, the United States, Britain and their allies are no less sociopathic than the enemies they propose to hunt down. So, British security forces are on a par with the beheaders. Do you agree with that? Well, I, I certainly don't agree with that. And I think there, are, there have been things published on blogs on the Stop the War website which 
uh, are certainly uh, wrong, which I certainly wouldn't agree with, and certainly the vast majority of people who are members of the Stop the War Coalition wouldn't agree with. Uh, I was reading in the paper this morning that the uh, management of the website of the Stop the War has changed, and if that shows that they're going to uh, be more careful to ensure that the content of the website on every occasion uh, mirrors um, or reflects, sorry, uh, the uh, the view of the leadership of the Stop the War Coalition, then uh, then that's a welcome move. Well, it's certainly, the, if it's such a splendid organization, it does keep having to delete so many articles that it posts prominently. It's deleted and recently comparing Islamic State to the anti-Franco International Brigade, blaming the Paris attacks on French policy, claiming that the threat to the Yazidis was largely mythical, indeed false, advocating it was time to go to war with Israel, which is an interesting position for a group calling itself Stop the War, and publish a poem that quotes a well-known anti-Semite and Holocaust denier. All of that it's had to take down. Does that sound like a respectable organization that the Labour Party should be associated with? Well, the views that, have, that you've uncovered aren't views, obviously, that uh, I uh, or members of the Stop the War Coalition uh, would uh, agree. But the big picture is this. In a coalition, there are all sorts of people, individuals, small numbers of individuals, who'll come out with unacceptable views. But the fact is, I'm interested in the democratic point. In the two million people that marched on the 15th of February 2003, in the thousands that have protested against the intervention in Libya and against the intervention in Syria. I'm not a pacifist, but I think that the truth is that the Stop the War Coalition and the ordinary people, uh, from vicars to pensioners, who marched against the war in Iraq, who marched against the intervention in Libya, and who and who've demonstrated against the intervention in Syria, they've got it right. Okay. And many of the people attacking Jeremy Corbyn and many of the people attacking the Stop the War Coalition have got it completely uh, wrong. And it's well, a topsy-turvy uh, world we're in when attending Stop the War events uh, is controversial. Right. We're still pretending that Tony Blair and others got it right in Iraq. Is seen sorry, we haven't got That's much a time, Mr. World, uh, indeed. Uh, we haven't got much time, Mr. Bergen. I just wanted to ask you this: uh, Mr. Corbyn stuck to his guns. He went to the fundraiser. His spin doctor, Seamus Milne, says that the Labour Party is now slowly cohering round Mr. Corbyn's views ac across a range of issues. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, I, I do. As I mentioned earlier. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn didn't instruct or order Labour MPs to vote against David Cameron's uh, plan uh, to bomb Syria. He gave them a free vote and it was the right thing to do. Uh, and by a ratio of two to one, yeah. Labour MPs uh, agreed with Jeremy Corbyn's analysis. By a ratio of two to one, uh, yeah. members of the Shadow Cabinet agreed and voted with Jeremy Corbyn's analysis. But on the, the issues such as the Working Families Tax Credits, on issues such as police cuts, on issues such as attacking George Osborne's failed economic programme of cuts and privatisation, the vast majority of Labour MPs, the vast majority of Labour members, and, as we've seen in Oldham, uh, in a successful by-election, a lot of the public agree with him. OK, Richard Bergen, thank you for joining us, and also thank you for persevering with uh, the, the earpiece. Clearly you had a bit of a problem. I'm grateful Thanks very that, much, you, Andrew. that you stuck with it. Thank you. Take care. Bye.